So welcome everybody. We are absolutely thrilled that you're joining us this morning. Um, I'm Rachel Justice and along with my partner, Jillian Levinson, we run the Woman to Woman program. And um, you are at the first session of um, a COVID and cancer limited series, which is a four session series on hypnosis and hypnotic okay. energy. Um, we are absolutely thrilled that we are welcoming back Emma Erin Zeller. Uh, for those of you who attended her one-off session that she did, we were saying it was actually about a year ago at this point. Time certainly flies during COVID, um, but you are all in for a real treat, a real experience. Um, it was such a powerful session last time, and I attend a lot of sessions of things like this, and it was um, really wonderful um, to be able to kind of turn the uh, reins over to Emma and learn from her and have an incredibly uh, powerful experience. Um, so I'm going to just give you the overview of who Emma is, and she's going to then tell you what she'll be doing today, what she'll be doing in this series over the next four weeks. And um, we encourage you all, if you can, to attend um, every session in the four session series as they do kind of build on one another, but each session is standalone. So if you are not able to attend um, each, that's absolutely fine. Or if anyone is joining um, and they didn't attend the ones beforehand, that's fine also. Um, they will be recorded and they will go in our video library also. Mm. So um, again, Emma Erin Zeller is a certified hypnotist and life coach with an academic background in public health. After time working in India, she combined her passion for spirituality with her love of empowering others through her business, Authenticity Remaster, All Round for short. Through All Round, she helps women find emotional balance and build resilience in the face of difficult life transitions through coaching, guided meditations, and hypnosis. And um, Emma's website is www.authenticityremastered.com. Um, and as I said, I will be turning the mic um, over to her and looking forward to going on this journey with you all for the next hour. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. I'm so, so excited to be here again today. Like you said, it was about a year ago. We did the first session and I had such an amazing time getting to talk with you all and lead everyone through hypnosis. So I'm glad to be here again and doing it for a whole month. I can't wait to get started. Um, so good morning, everyone. I'm going to start sharing my screen because um, I like to do just a little bit of a PowerPoint as we go through to keep us on track. So let's go ahead and get started. So over the next four weeks, throughout the month, month of March, we're gonna be talking about using hypnosis for stress relief. So today we're really taking in the basics. We're gonna be talking about hypnosis, stress, how you can use hypnosis to help with your stress. Pretty straightforward, right? Next week is going to be about managing stress and stressors, the difference between the two um, and how you can work with both. The week after that is going to be about different breathing techniques, managing um, different, you have a nerve in your body called the vagus nerve, working with that to calm your nervous system and manage stress. And the last week is going to be about building your stress reducing practice. We're going to overview everything we talked about over the month and give you opportunities to think about how these different techniques can really begin to work into your daily life. So let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about our schedule today. We're going to be talking about what hypnosis is and almost just as importantly, what hypnosis isn't because there's a lot of understandable myths and fears about hypnosis. Okay. We're then going to segue into talking about stress, how it appears in day-to-day -day life, American society, how it might be presenting for you in your own world. And then Shocker, we're going to talk about how hypnosis is used for stress relief. Um, and obviously at the end, um, like Rachel mentioned, like we did in the last session about a year ago, we'll end with a hypnotic meditation for stress relief. One thing I want to mention before we get started, I was saying this to the folks who are here um, right when we entered, is I really love these workshops to feel more like a conversation than a lecture. Um, either is fine, but I love to get to know people on the call. So as we go through, there are going to be a number of times when I ask if anyone has any questions 
or any thoughts, really any comments you'd like to share. And I'd really love to hear from you at those points. So just want to make you aware of that. And let's go ahead and get started. So to begin, hello, I am Emma Aronzeller. Rachel already gave me a beautiful introduction and I so appreciate that. A little bit more about me. I am a certified life coach and hypnotist. And with my business, with this work I do, I'm really passionate about helping people be happier being themselves. Basically equipping them with different tools to feel more themselves, feel more at peace, feel more empowered to work towards their goals, whatever that might be. When I was in university, I studied public health and chemistry and I did a bit of a foray living in India, doing nonprofit work, and that just continued to deepen my interest in some of these different spiritual self-help topics. But I've always been an analytical-minded kind of person and a bit of a nerd, in other words. And so I loved learning about this connection between the brain, the body, spirituality, self-help, and science. And when COVID hit and the world kind of crumbled, um, as did my life, I had to move home. And I was like, well why don't I start a business about all these interests and passions I have that brought me to becoming a hypnotist and eventually doing these amazing sessions with you. And since today's session is about stress relief, I wanted to include a picture of my Corgi puppy Pearl just to start us off because I personally think little puppies are very stress relieving. Um, she is unfortunately no longer that small, but she is still just as cute. So let's go ahead and start diving into hypnosis. So my first question for everyone here, have you experienced hypnosis before? I know some of you guys were in the last session. I'd love to see maybe a raise of hands, a head nod if you have. Have some of y'all. I recognize some familiar faces and names from our last session. So I always like to ask this because surprisingly, most people have actually experienced hypnosis at some point in their lives. Now, that doesn't mean that you've worked with someone like me and I've hypnotized you. It also doesn't mean that you've been at a stage hypnosis show, maybe you know on a cruise, at a comedy show where they hypnotize people on stage and make them do crazy things, right? Hypnosis is actually something that we float in and out of. It's a trance-like kind of state. We move in and out of every single day. So let me give you a few examples. For one, let's say one day you are driving home from work. Maybe you're driving, maybe you are taking the subway home, right? It's a path that you take every single day. You don't really have to think about it. You know the right turn, you know the stop that you have to get out, get off on, and you just kind of zone out, right? You zone out and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're home. And you're like, oh, you know, this is like the normal 40 minute, 40 minute commute I take every day. But for some reason, it just passed by like that today. Right. Has anyone had that experience? I know I have many a time. So that's one instance. Another instance, I take it, everyone here has experienced at one point or another, is have you ever been watching a scary movie? And I know not everyone likes scary movies. I used to love them, but I've sworn off them now because they scare me too bad today. Watching some kind of scary movie where there's a monster, a villain, something like that. And at one point in the movie, the bad guy, you know, pops out behind a wall or does something and you jump. You know, you have a physical reaction to what's happening in the movie. Now... At first glance, this is normal, whatever you got scared. But if we think a little bit more deeply about it, this is actually really interesting because with your conscious thinking brain, right, you know that you're watching a movie. You know it was probably made in LA. You know that there's some incredible team of makeup artists making Freddy Krueger look insane, right? There's CGI, there's all these other things. You know that it's fake, but your body is responding to it as if it's real. Right? So it's really interesting. And the reason that when we're driving home, time can pass like that and we just zone out or we'll jump when we're watching a scary movie and, you know, something scary happens is because in both of these scenarios, you go into a light stage of hypnosis. You go into a trance-like state, right? So 
We're going to dive a little bit deeper on what's happening in both of these experiences in just a moment, but to begin to kind of reel us in and to sum up, hypnosis for starters is a normal and natural state. Anytime we enter a trance-like autopilot um, sort of zoned out space, we're going into a light stage of hypnosis and this is okay. This is normal, right? Because of that, it's something we've all experienced. Not everyone has been hypnotized, but everyone has experienced hypnosis in some capacity, right? Do you hear that nuance and kind of get the difference there? It's a trance that we float in and out of very, very commonly. And the last thing I want to mention here, because I think it's really important to kind of begin to create some safety around hypnosis is it's a state of consciousness, okay? So what I mean by that is you are awake and aware the entire time you're in hypnosis, right? In both of the examples I just gave, the driving home from work, the watching the scary movie, you're conscious in both of those examples, right? Like you're completely aware. You're just entering a sort of different kind of consciousness where you're a little bit more relaxed in some cases, or you're really focused on one thing meaning you're focused on the movie in the other example. So you're still conscious. And what's important here is you're still in control. I really like to emphasize that right from the beginning. Those are a few tenets about hypnosis generally, but let's get into hypnosis as more of a practice, more of what we're going to be doing today. So the National Guild of Hypnotists, the NGH, as you see here, is the oldest and largest hypnosis association in America. It's where I got my own training. They're great. Love them. They officially define hypnosis as an altered state of consciousness where the subconscious mind is in a state of hypersuggestibility. So that's a lot of jargon. Let's break down exactly what that means. So the first part, it's an altered state of consciousness. What's really important here is it is not a state of unconsciousness. You are still conscious, awake, and aware in hypnosis, okay? And it's the state of consciousness where the subconscious mind is in a state of hyper-suggestibility. So before we go further in this jargony definition we have here, let's break down what the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is. So your conscious mind is going to be your thinking mind. It's going to be the chatter you hear in your head day in and day out. It's your problem solving brain. It's the energy you use to work towards your goals and ambitions. When you're in a conversation with someone, it's the part of your brain that formulates your response to what they say, right? It's your thinking brain. Pretty straightforward. Your subconscious mind, however, Directly, you know, translates, if we break down the prefix, subconscious means below consciousness. So your subconscious holds the things that you don't actively think about, but still guide your life. So what we'll see a lot with subconscious patterns are things like your habits, right? A smoking habit, something to always be, you know, having a fixation on that's gonna be stored in the subconscious mind. When we talked about that example earlier of driving home on the same route every single day, not having to think about it, you've practiced that drive home or you know your metro combination to get home so many times that you no longer have to think about it. It's stored in the subconscious, right? Those are some clear cut examples of things that are below our level of consciousness. But there's a bit more of a nuanced conversation about what we store in our subconscious. And that's also our belief. We store our beliefs in our subconscious mind. Now, when I say beliefs, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, your personal faith traditions or your religious beliefs or them, anything political. What I mean is what you believe about yourself and about the world. So an example of a personal belief um, that would be relevant to our discussion today is a lot of people, especially women, especially women who, you know, have families, are mothers, et cetera, will sometimes take on the belief that I have to do it all. I have to handle everything for everybody, right? I would guess my mom has this kind of belief because she, growing up, was always doing everything for all of us. She's a saint, right? It's a belief that she has that kind of dictates 
how she would navigate the world, right? Helping us with our homework, um, doing the dinner, doing X, Y, and Z. And subconscious beliefs are neither good nor bad, but sometimes we need to look at them and consider, is this helping me live the way I want to live? So when we think about stress management specifically, a belief like, you know, I have to do everything for everyone, or I'm, you know, responsible for other people's needs all the time. That is a belief that can sometimes begin to add stress because it's the kind of thing where you look around at life, you have the perspective on of I'm everyone else's caretaker. So you're looking at life through that perspective, through that belief, which puts a lot of responsibility on you, right? Which can add a lot of stress. So when we're thinking about beliefs, they're neutral for the most part. They're not necessarily good or bad. You're allowed to want to be everyone's caretaker, but it's a question of how is this serving me? And for today, is this giving me more stress or is this helping me feel more calm, in charge and empowered in my own life? So to cap off this definition here, Basically, in hypnosis, you go into this relaxed, trance-like state of consciousness where you're still awake and aware. This opens up your subconscious mind, and it puts your mind in a state of hyper-suggestibility. So what does that word even mean? That's a word that hypnotists throw around a lot, and I don't, I personally, before I went through my certification and training, I had no idea what it meant. Essentially, suggestions are giving your mind new beliefs, new ideas, new ways of living. Suggestions can be given in the form of affirmations. A affirmation would be something like, I am a naturally calm person, right? They can be given in the form of visualizations, getting to experience a life, you know, you in your own life where you are less stressed, where you feel more calm. There's a lot of different ways that we can deliver suggestions and hypnosis. Today, we're going to be primarily doing visualizations, a bit of metaphor and affirmations, just so you know. But we open up the subconscious mind so that we can change some things in there to help you live a more calm and peaceful life to reach your goals um, and really like build through, build up the life that you want. So that was a lot of information about hypnosis. I'm curious if at this point anyone has any questions, anything they want to share, anything at all. Okay, let's go ahead and keep going then. Okay, let's quickly get into a little bit of how it works in the brain. So what I always love to share with people is there's actually a lot of scientific research on hypnosis. Um, in particular, there is one PhD and medical doctor at Stanford University who's spearheading a ton of research on hypnosis. And in 2019, he was involved with a study where they started looking at, you know, what's happening in the brain during hypnosis. So here's a quick breakdown. Um, and we're also going to review this in slightly simpler terms in the next slide, okay? So the first thing that's happening is the brain is going into a relaxed hypnotic state, okay? Basically, this correlates with different brain waves called alpha and theta brain waves. We don't need to get super deep into this, but it's basically the functioning of your brain when you're more relaxed, you're going into this alpha and theta brainwave state, okay? After that, they saw different activity in three different areas of the brain that had to do with the brain and body connection, right? So your ability for your brain to send a feeling of calm through your body or excitement, joy, whatever that might be. And there was also an activation of the areas related to attention. So they found that people were able to, when in hypnosis, they were able to focus more clearly on what the hypnotist was saying, you know, the visualization, whatever that might be, they're able to focus very clearly, but they're also able to not be distracted, right? If there were noises in the external environment or other kind of external stimuluses, they could just avoid them, avoid them from taking their attention off of that thing. Right? And so when we look at kind of what's all happening together, you get into this unique relaxed state your attention is increased and basically that connection between the brain and the body is also 
increase. And that's what works together to make a successful hypnosis session. Okay. So this is all coming from that Stanford research. So if we break it down in simpler terms, basically your brain is activated in a very specific way when you enter a trance state. If you want the technicals, it's the alpha and the theta brainwave state. Okay. Your ability to focus is sharpened. And with that, your brain body connection is also increased. So what happens when these things are at play is that your mind is primed to carry out whatever the suggestions of the hypnotist were in the waking state, because you already have an experience, almost kind of like a practice round of being more stress-free, of being a calm, naturally peaceful person. Whatever it is you're working on with the hypnotist, it's almost like you practice having that goal, being that thing in hypnosis, and your brain better understands how to then become that in your day-to-day -day life. Yes. Awesome. Um, uh, just a moment. All righty. So does anyone have any questions there? The next part we're going to get into is hypnosis myths. Any questions, anything you want clarity on, anything like that? Okay. Let's go ahead and keep going. Ms. Mm -hmm. Corlands. Thank you. Vivian. Yes, am I on? Um, okay. If you guys have any questions or anything, just unmute yourself and let me know so we can keep going through. I would love that. That'd be wonderful. And so one thing I'm curious about now, one thing I always love to get into with people is, are you familiar with any hypnosis myths? When you think of hypnosis, what are the different, you know, things that you've heard in the past? What initially comes to mind? Anything like that that you might think of? Yeah. Is it Danae or Denis? You're right, um, Emma. It's Danae. You said it okay. just right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I, in growing up, um, I've heard so many myths about hypnosis to the point where it can be frightening for people. Yeah. You know, absolutely. one of the bigger, big myths that, um, I guess a very popular one, whoever hypnotizes you, you can, once you're in that state of control, only their voice matters to you. They can make you do whatever they want. You know, wow. if, if they want you to rob the city bank on the corner mm -hmm. or the bank of America, right? are you can you do it and not remember it right so a lot of those things about like it's mind control i'm gonna do right. things i wouldn't normally do absolutely absolutely and you know to validate you danae like before i became a hypnotist you know i was excited about seeing my hypnotist but i was also kind of nervous yes I heard a lot of stuff uh -huh. you know what's really gonna happen here Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing. I'm going to go deep into that in just a moment and talk about okay. some of the other ways to think about that. Um, does anyone else have any myths they think of when they think of hypnosis or maybe something you've seen in like TV or movies? I feel like um, I've seen or heard in movies that you're not going to remember anything at all mm. um, about what happened while you were being hypnotized. Yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty common as well. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some of these. So let's start with Danae's because she brought up the first two here on my list. So like I was saying a few moments ago, the first time I was hypnotized, I'm just going to, okay, beautiful. Thank you to whoever needed themselves. Appreciate that. The first time I started seeing hypnotists, you know, I was really I excited, know. but I had seen a lot of different things about what hypnosis was, and I was a little nervous too. And I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I'm a bit of a control freak myself. So I was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know about this. But as soon as I started going into hypnosis, I quickly realized, you know, this is more like a deep guided meditation where I'm really relaxed, but I'm actually, you know, still aware and conscious of everything, right? I wasn't going into this place where you know, 20 minutes later, I had no idea what was going on. I was actually very relaxed. It was more like a meditation than some 
crazy mind control thing. And what I want to tie back here with this idea of, you know, is it mind control is when you're in hypnosis, you are still conscious, right? You're still awake and aware. Hypnosis is a state of consciousness, not unconsciousness. Um, and one thing I like to bring up here, and this also ties into the next point and also what you brought up today is what we'll often see in stage hypnosis shows, right? Those crazy shows where they bring people on stage and they make people, you know, quack like a duck or bark like a dog, do all these different things. If you've ever been on a cruise, I know they're kind of popular there, comedy shows, et cetera, et cetera. So what's happening here is these people that they choose from the audience normally have a few things. I'm giving you a behind the scenes look as a hypnotist. Normally they are young people. So like college students or high schoolers and they'll pick younger people to do these crazier things in hypnosis because young people like attention, right? Young people want to be the one who's the center of attention. Whether that attention is good or bad is for them to decide. So they're going to be more likely to go along and be willing to basically be so hypnotized to do these things, right? They'll also pick people who are really engaged in the show, who are like, wow, this is the craziest thing I have ever seen. They'll pick the really excited people from the crowd because those people are normally more hypnotizable. But what I really like to emphasize here is if they did not want to be doing those kind of crazy things on stage, they wouldn't have to. They really would not have to um, because you, like I've been saying, you're still in control when you're in hypnosis. And if you don't want to get that deep into hypnosis, where you'll do those stuff, do those things, you'll stop yourself. Um, and it's very interesting. And I've, you know, had my clients do this as well. So I like to talk about that, I like to talk about the stage hypnosis show, because I know that's most people's familiarity. But now I want to get into this next point um, that you also brought up, Danae, of, you know, am I going to do illegal things or, you know, are they going to make me be able to do things I wouldn't normally do? And first thing I'll say for the 57th time, you are always in control. But the other part is also your brain wants to protect you. Your brain has a lot of natural protective mechanisms in it. And your brain isn't going to do things it wouldn't normally do in hypnosis that it wouldn't do in the waking state. So I always kind of jokingly say like, okay, are you going to get my social security number? First of all, no, I'm not a con, art con artist. I, I, what would you even do with that? I don't know how. But second of all, I wouldn't be able to do that. No hypnotist would because you're one still in control, but your brain would kind of see through that and be like, wait, what? Why are they asking me for that? Why are they telling me to rob Bank of America? Right? Like you were saying tonight. It would not be possible. Your brain is always going to protect you and you're always in control in hypnosis. Okay. And Rachel, can you remind me which myth that you brought up? The myth that um, you're not going to remember anything that happened while you were under hypnosis. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So that is only true when clients have to go extremely deep into hypnosis like extremely deep. Um, for the work we're going to do today, we're going to be in a very light stage of hypnosis. It's going to be like a really relaxing meditation. Um, I've actually never even worked with a client where we've had to go so deep that that was happening. But normally, clients normally only go that deep if they are doing something for pain management, um, help with like anesthesia, things like that. But even so, it's less of I don't remember and more of like, oh, it's just a bit fuzzy. But today you're going to have full awareness of everything that's happening in the session. Um, and you'll also have the recording afterwards that will jog your memory of anything that goes by. The only thing I'll sometimes see is if clients get really relaxed, they'll fall asleep a little bit and they'll be like, oh, I forgot about that part. I was kind of like half asleep. Um, but that's just because it gets really relaxing. So yeah. And the last myth I want to mention and address is the question of, well, what if I get stuck, right? Like, what if I get stuck in hypnosis? Good news. You cannot get stuck in hypnosis. Um, so worst case scenario in this session would be my computer, you know, exploded. My ancient MacBook, just something happens and we're in the middle of hypnosis and it spontaneously ends, right? One of two things would happen. One, you'd either go into a nice normal nap and then wake up from that nap and be like, wow, I feel so relaxed. Or two, um, you would notice that I had stopped talking 
and you would open your eyes and you would think, oh, where did Emma go? What's most likely to happen is I think Rachel would be like, okay, guys, something happened and uh, let's uh, continue, I guess. But just know you won't get stuck in hypnosis. Um, and like I said, it's not my control. You are actually in control and you're aware the whole time. So before we go any further, does anyone have any other questions about hypnosis myths? Anything else you're curious about? Awesome. Let's go ahead and... Oh, we're not quite at stress. I just wanted to list this really quickly. Hypnosis can be used for a lot of things. Over the next four weeks, we're talking about stress, but I work with a lot of clients on confidence, relationship issues, habits. Um, a lot of the research about hypnosis is about pain management, a lot of times in clinical or hospital settings, um, and mental health management as well. The latter two, though, normally are done in conjunction with licensed professionals. So I just like to mention those as well. So let's, tar let's start talking about stress. So last time we did this session, I didn't go very deep into stress because I was like, well, I think everyone here knows what stress feels like. And I don't think that's changed. You know, I think we're all aware of what stress feels like, but I'm just gonna give you in this section a few of the baseline pieces of what stress is, what's happening in the body and um, how it might be presenting for you. So the National Institutes of Health define stress as the body's response to physical, mental, or emotional pressure, okay? So this basically means stress is our fight or flight response. When our brain notices a challenge or some kind of change in our environment or in our life, and mind you, this can be in our external world, or it can be a stressful thought or idea that comes up, our body gets activated in a very specific way. You know, our heart might race a little bit faster. You might kind of get the sweats, right? It can show up in a lot of different ways, but it's your body's way of preparing you to overcome this thing, right? And this developed from, you know, being cavemen and running from lions and dinosaurs, right? Probably not the dinosaurs, but you get what I mean, right? It was fight or flight from some kind of predator. In day-to-day -day life in modern society, we have a lot of different quote unquote, lions and dinosaurs that were running. And I understand this is not correct from an evolutionary perspective, but I couldn't help myself with the dinosaurs. Um, so we have two different types of stressors in our lives, acute and chronic. Acute might be something like you are running late for work or, you know, a date with your girlfriends at a restaurant and you're trying to make it there on time. So you're kind of rushing and you feel kind of nervous and you don't want to make it there. Once you get there to the restaurant to work, your stress is fine. You're like, okay, I made it. The stressor is gone. Chronic stress, however, are the different factors in our lives that can continually weigh on us and continually activate this fight or flight response. So some examples of chronic stress are living in a pandemic, right? Having, you know, difficulties with money when money's tight. That's often a source of chronic stress. <laughs> Living with some kind of chronic illness, you know, I know the woman to woman program, you guys are cancer survivors and people battling cancer. That's another chronic stressor. And this can have different effects on the body and the mind over time. Um, so let's kind of kick in and talk about the stress epidemic, essentially. So 2020, as I'm sure you all know, I don't think we need to go into it, was a very stressful year. What's interesting, however, it was is that it was actually, from like a research point of view, the most stressful year. So Gallup, you might have heard of them. They do all different kinds of polls, um, but they do one annual report called the Gallup Global Emotions, and they take into account positive emotions, negative emotions, stress being one of them. And they interviewed people across the majority of countries in the world and found that in 2020, the average stress level rose by 5% across the globe. And that's a pretty huge jump in, you know, everybody's daily lives to be feeling more stressed on a sort of chronic ongoing level, right? When we think about life in America specifically, Chronic stress, you know, this stress that can really wear and tear us down is actually often called an epidemic, right? There's a lot of factors in American society that 
let stress fester and grow more than it does in some other cultures and societies. So we have a much bigger focus on work and professional advancement, right? We tend to work longer hours. We tend to, you know, have more expected of us at work. And obviously this is not everyone's situations, but this is just what they've seen from a public health perspective. We also don't have as much time, like social time isn't as important, right? Like I was in Spain in the fall and they were just hanging out all the time. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful and also very different, but it was a much more social culture. Being with others, developing and cultivating strong relationships that are in person is a great way to reduce stress. Um, so I just like to mention these things. So to kind of really validate, like if these past few years have felt extra, extra special or extra, extra stressful, that's very understandable. Um, and it's something that they've been reporting, you know, with different facts and statistics. Okay. And I also just wanted to mention a few ways that you might see stress in your day-to-day -day life. I'm not going to read through all of these different um, symptoms, but stress isn't only like a mental kind of like racing thoughts. Oh my goodness, I have so much to do thing. It also can relate to a lot of different physical symptoms, achiness, headaches, tiredness, exhaustion, um, as well as emotions. They've seen that with an uptick in stress, you also tend to have an uptick in sadness, frustration, overwhelm, all of these different pieces. Um, so I just wanted to put this up here in case, you know, you were experiencing one of these and you didn't know that it might be related to stress. Okay, so let's now get into how hypnosis can be used for stress reduction. I'm going to go through three examples and then we're going to start getting into the hypnosis session for today. So the first one that I always love to talk about is they did a study with a group of breast cancer survivors, right? And the study had two different groups. One group did different imagery techniques, which was what they termed hypnosis for the purpose of that study. Another group got um, like group therapy support. So the amazing thing is both of these groups improved in their stress management, quality of life, etc. However, they found that the group that did the hypnosis saw larger increases in their quality of life their coping, their perception of support from others, the way that they saw the support they already had was also improved. And I think this is important to note because stress, improving our stress is so much more than not feeling stressed, right? It's also feeling happier in life. It's feeling more connected to the people important to us, right? It's something that is able to matriculate in a lot of different parts of life. And I think that this study shows that very beautifully. The second study I like to bring up is one where a group of HIV positive men went through a stress management program to improve, you know, anxiety, mood, self-esteem, et cetera. They did 10 weeks of progressive muscle relaxation, which you guys are going to do today, as well as hypnosis and some meditation. So naturally after 10 weeks doing this twice a week, their stress had decreased, right? Shocker. The thing that's interesting about this study, though, is they retested them a month later. They were no longer doing the bi-weekly sessions. They, these people were on their own. They weren't necessarily doing it on their own time anyways at, at this point. They found that these men, their stress levels remained low. So not only did the treatment help at the time of, but it helped in the long term. And when we think about stress management techniques, especially with hypnosis, it's about not, it's about acute management, right? Like, oh my gosh, I'm having a stressful day. I want to do a hypnosis session and relax. But it also helps you with long-term chronic management. This goes back to the idea of beliefs we talked about earlier, you know, shifting a belief from you know, I have to take care of everyone all the time to maybe having some boundaries around what you're responsible for and what you're not letting go of some things that might have been causing you stress, learning to become a more peaceful person. Hypnosis is able to change us at deeper, more fundamental layers to help us be more calm, be more peaceful, even if we're not doing hypnosis twice a week, which I think is really cool. Um, the last one I'm just going to review very briefly in the interest of time, but it was basically children 
who were, who had cancer before they were getting um, different stressful procedures, received hypnosis. Um, the group that got the hypnosis found that they had much lower levels of stress and also um, pain as compared to the group that got standard care. So a lot of this research about hypnosis in clinical settings is about, you know, pain reduction, stress reduction, and they see that that reduces hospital stays, amount of anesthesia needed, different things like that. So, okay, people, we've talked about a lot today. I'm on a whirlwind here. I'm curious, before we start to dive into the hypnosis portion, I have a few more monologues to give you. Does anyone have any questions that they want to review before we go into hypnosis? Awesome. Okay, what I have here on the screen is just the disclaimer that I give all of my clients, and I'm going to briefly review the main points with you. If you would like to read along or read after this session, you can find the link available at the bottom, bit.ly.com slash Um, Essentially, it's saying that hypnosis is not a substitute for medical or mental health attention or treatment. You can think of this as a supplement to your health and your stress management, Anything you are currently doing, however, in conjunction with any licensed professional should not be changing because of anything you learned in this or what you're about to experience in hypnosis. Um, that is essentially what this says and it ends with talking about what you might experience today, the relaxation, visual imagery, creative visualization, hypnosis, and stress reduction processes, basically the different methods that we're gonna be using today. Um, what I would love is if everyone could just unmute themselves and um, just say yes as like a verbal confirmation of understanding this disclaimer. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's one of those little technology things that we have to do in other ways um, via Zoom. So. Whew, let's go ahead and start getting into it. So I'm going to give you a few things to be mindful of before we start. As I do, um, the position I normally recommend people getting into for hypnosis is being in a comfortable chair with your head and your neck supported if possible. Um, that might not, might not be possible for everyone. That's completely okay. But we're going to be doing a lot of muscle relaxation. So I always love when people are able to really lean their head back if they want. Um, if you can't, however, that's totally fine. You're still going to get relaxed. So a few things to be mindful of as we go into hypnosis today. One, I've said it a million times and I'm going to say it again. You're in control the whole time, okay? In this session, if I tell you to see a dandelion and instead you want to see a rose in the visualization, please go ahead and see the rose. You are allowed to create this out in the way that would be most comforting, most relaxing, and just simply how you want to. That's point number one. Point number two, if in the middle of the session, you feel like you kind of need to shift or maybe scratch your nose, do something like that, please feel free. This session is all about you getting as relaxed as possible. So if you need to do something to get more relaxed, please do. It's not going to magically take you out of hypnosis. Let's see, last one. Oh, yeah. As you are going into hypnosis, I want to remind you, it's very much like a guided meditation. If you've ever done that before, we're just going a little bit deeper and specifically relaxing your body more. So as we do that, some things you might feel in your body are a sense of heaviness, kind of like you're just melting into the chair beneath you, feeling so relaxed. Um, other clients sometimes feel a sense of lightness, like you're floating, right? Sometimes there's a tingling in the hands and feet. If you feel any of these things, that's totally normal. If you don't feel any, that's also quite normal. Um, two of the a little bit more weird ones you might experience, sometimes people get excess salivation in their mouth. So basically you just have to swallow more. Um, if that's happening to you in this session, don't worry, that's normal. And people's eyelids will flutter sometimes. So like, I, I'm not gonna pretend to do it for you as a demonstration, but your eyelids might flutter a little bit and that's also totally normal. So that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen share. Um, 
So we're about to get started. Does anyone have any questions before we begin? All righty. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody on the call so it can just be as um, relaxing as possible. Um, and if for any reason during the session you have some kind of question, please put it in the chat, okay? All righty. So if everyone is ready, you can go ahead and begin to lean back and get comfortable. When you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. All right. I'd like you to just start by taking a deep inhale in for four counts. Hold it for two. And exhale for six. And again, inhale for four. Hold for two. Oh, he's not available? Exhale for six. And one more time. Inhale for four. Hold for two. And exhale for six. Good, good. We're about to embark on a co-creative journey using your vivid imagination. All you need to do is listen to the sound of my voice and build out the beautiful images with your creative mind. So to begin, I'd like you to see yourself in a relaxing place in nature. Maybe you find yourself walking along the beach. Maybe you are on your favorite path or hike in a forest. Maybe you're on a boat in a lake. Just begin to visualize and build out this peaceful, calming scene in nature. And as you do, Maybe you notice that you hear birds singing in the background. Maybe you feel a soft, cool breeze go across your face. Maybe you inhale and smell the freshness of the outdoors. Whatever you notice here in this space, it's all so relaxing. You feel so at peace. And as you're here in this place in nature, you see in the distance that there's a nice, comfortable chair. Or maybe you see a blanket on the ground instead. Begin to walk towards this chair or blanket. As you do, you maybe hear your feet, your footsteps on the ground. You feel the warm air, the sun on your skin. And you make it to this comfortable seating place. You go ahead and you take a seat here on your chair or blanket. It's almost like you feel your whole body just melt. Sink down into this chair or blanket. And as you're here, you just feel the sun gently warm your skin. It's almost like you're soaking up the sun's rays and it feels so calming, so good here in this place. And as the sun and its warmth soaks into your skin, you just find yourself becoming more and more relaxed, easing your muscles, getting calmer and calmer. Good. You begin to feel the sun just warming your head and your face. As the sun gently warms your face, you feel your eyebrows relax. 
You rest your eyes and your eyelids. You feel your cheeks and your mouth relax. Your jaw slacks if it needs to. And your whole face is completely, totally relaxed. And the sense of calm begins to move down your neck. You feel this peacefulness move into your neck and your throat, just relaxing any muscles. You feel it move down your shoulders. And this cascade of relaxation moves from your upper arms to your elbows, to your forearms, down to your wrists, out the tips of your fingers. And this relaxation now moves down your chest and your abdomen, relaxing any of your stomach and your back muscles, feeling so calm, so at peace. You feel this sense of peacefulness just move down your legs, from your thighs, to your knees, relaxing your calves, all the way down to your ankles and feet. Your whole body just feels so completely, totally relaxed. And as you're here in this peaceful place in nature, Notice that the sun has just begun to set. You see a beautiful sunset bloom in front of you. There are vibrant reds and oranges. Maybe the clouds are a soft pink. It's beautiful. And you're in awe of this lovely, lovely sunset. So in a few moments, I'm going to count from five to one. With each count, you'll find yourself becoming more and more relaxed. And at the count of one, the sun will reach the horizon, just beginning to sink below. So five, feeling more and more relaxed as you see the bright reds and the oranges in the sky. Four, maybe you inhale, notice the freshness of the evening in this place. Three, feeling so good, so calm, so relaxed. Two, just going deeper and deeper, all the way down to one. The sun reaches the horizon, just sinks below, as you feel so totally, completely relaxed. Good, good. You've now become so relaxed that your subconscious mind is ready to take on new, empowering suggestions about any old stressors in life, whether they're mundane items in your day-to-day -day or larger parts and factors in your life. So to begin, I'd like you to again see yourself in a peaceful place in nature. This can be the same one as before, or it can be something totally new. Just begin to take in the details all around you. What sort of plants might there be? Maybe you notice vibrant greens, soft pastel pinks and purples, the beautiful blue sky above you. Maybe you hear the soft singing of birds in the distance. You feel a sense of peacefulness in yourself growing. You smile as you see a butterfly 
colorfully red and orange, just float by in the distance and land on a flower. Take in all of the details here and notice how you feel because of these details. You see how this place is safe, peaceful, and abundant. The longer you're here, the more relaxed and safe you feel. You turn your head and you look out to your right. And in the distance, you see a nice lawn chair next to a small little table. You see that there's something on this table and you're curious to learn more. You start walking over to the chair, feeling the soft ground beneath your feet, noticing any hairs on your arms tickle as a light breeze goes by. You make it to the chair, you go ahead and sit down, feeling supported and comfortable. On the small, small table, you see a notepad with a long list on it. The notepad is worn and tattered. The corners are fraying. Looks as though coffee has been spilled on it. Some of the writing's been smudged. As you examine the old worn notepad and the list written on it, you notice that it's a list of all the stressors in your life right now. And in life, you see how stressors can just pile on longer and longer, like an endless list of to-dos, maybe a grocery list that takes ages to fill. Interestingly, the notepad almost feels heavy in your hand, much like the weight of these stressors in your life. Seeing this long list, you feel ready to relieve the pressure and the stress that it's been causing you. You feel so at peace in this beautiful scene in nature that bringing your stressors to mind feels safe, it feels easy. You feel the sun on your skin, your back sinking into the chair. You feel a sense of calm and power to address the things that have been stressing you. I want you to start acknowledging or reading what is on your list of stressors right now. You pick up the notepad and look at the words that are on this list. These represent the different stressors in your life. And if you don't see words themselves, you notice there's a pen on the table. You can pick up the pen and write out your major stressors on this notepad. If you don't see any words, just take a few moments to bring your main stressors to mind. Good, good. And in this peaceful place in nature, you realize those stressors don't have control over you. You feel lightness in your heart and calm in your body and a readiness to let go of the power these old stressors had over you. You place the notepad with the list of stressors down. You get up from the comfortable chair and you again start walking through this peaceful place in nature. As you're walking, you notice a little patch of dandelions. As you might remember, as kids, you often pick a dandelion and blow all of their tiny, wispy seeds away to make a wish. But today, they're going to represent something different. You intuitively realize that instead of blowing away these dandelions and making a wish, that you can have each dandelion represent one of the stressors in your life and feel what it would be like to just blow it away. To blow away the stress and watch it fade into the distance. And if for any reason you don't want to pick or blow away a dandelion, you can instead do this with your favorite flower, maybe bubbles, and just watch the petals or the bubbles blow away instead. 
So you decide to try this out. You pick a dandelion from the green field and you bring to mind one of the stressors from the list. You are so tired of this thing and you do not want to put up with it anymore, whether in your external or your internal world. You feel your whole body filled with the sense of peacefulness and of power and the decision to be done with this stressor. Feeling this, you blow away this dandelion representing this stress and watch as all of its seeds move into the sunset in the sky. And as it disperses into the air away from you, you feel the stress leave your body, a sense of peace, calm, and trust in yourself to handle anything that comes your way arises. Maybe you feel a sense of lightness. And feeling all of this, you deeply believe in your ability to live as a calm, peaceful person, whatever arises. So, feeling inspired by this, take some time now to blow away all the dandelions and any stressors that they might represent in your life. Notice what you feel in your body from the tips to, of your fingers to the tips of your toes. The lightness, how the stress just moves out as you blow away this dandelion and leave yourself with peace and calm. Take some time to blow away your stressors through these dandelions now. Good, good. And you feel so at peace, so at rest, knowing that you can come into this space, remove these stressors, and show yourself that you're the one in control, no matter what may come into your life. You are capable of handling whatever comes your way, and you find yourself responding more and more calmly to any old triggers for stress. The things from your list on that old tattered notepad feel like a part of the distant past. They fade further and further away. Your response to them has changed and you are becoming more and more peaceful each day. Every day and in every way, you're becoming more calm and more trusting of yourself. You smile as you linger here in this peaceful place in nature for just a moment, realizing you can always return to this comfortable scene and you can return to these peaceful, calm feelings. All you have to do is take a deep breath, close your eyes, and imagine yourself here again to feel refreshed and calmed by that thought. Good, good. So in a few moments, I'm going to count from one to five. At the count of five, you'll emerge feeling completely refreshed and rejuvenated, ready to go on with your day. So one, two, maybe beginning to sway a bit back and forth. Three, wiggling your fingers and your toes. Four, just fluttering your eyes and five, opening your eyes, feeling completely awake, rejuvenated and refreshed. All right, hello, good morning. Take your time coming back to Rachel, I know we're a bit over time, so just let me know if we need to cap it real quick here. Good, okay, hold on, let me, um, I'm sorry, I turned off the, unmuting capability. So let me fix that really quick. Okay, beautiful. Um, so yeah, take your time coming back too. But 
if you feel ready, if anyone does, let me know what are some things you felt in that? How was that experience for you? It's also totally okay if everyone's kind of in half nap mode still and feeling really relaxed. Oh, awesome. Um, I, hi, it's Robin. I actually had to come off a few minutes early because I had to wait in my chiropractic office. So, but I, 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 I love this. I, I really do love this. And what I love about it for me, which is I feel that I can connect better to this than I can to mindful meditation, is mm. that you have the ability to really take me to a place where mindful meditation, I'm still aware of mm -hmm. everything that's around me so um that's i think what i really like when you have me walking through my favorite space i really mm -hmm. do my mind goes there mm -hmm. amazing well thank you for sharing that robin yeah like like we we're talking about earlier hypnosis just gets you to a place where you can really feel like what you're in is real even though you know it's your imagination right and that's what's really cool about the mind and when we think about stress, how we can come back into a sense of peacefulness. So thank you for sharing that, Robin. I really appreciate that. So awesome. Anyone else have anything they want to share? Any questions? Well, I was going to say, when, when we first started, it was very, very noisy outside my office. There were sirens and construction. And by the end, I didn't hear it at all. And in the beginning, it's all I could hear. And by the time we were done, I I didn't hear it. I was just very inside my head, which was really interesting. Yeah. And, you know, when we think about the one slide I had about what's happening in the brain, one of those main things is that your, I believe it's your brain salience network, the thing that's always like, okay, what's happening in my environment? That is kind of muted. It's turned down a little bit. So it's not as focused on, you know, what are the sirens? What are all these other things I'm hearing? It's really just tunnel visioned in on, you know, what is this peaceful scene in nature? How do I feel? What is my body feeling like right now? So thank you for sharing that, Rachel. Hi, this is Mertis. I'd hi. like to say, hi, I'm glad that I was able to join because as Robin, <clears throat> excuse me, and Rachel, no, I've been going through a lot of bad pain, mm. but they insisted that I get on today. And oh. thanks to both of them, because it has helped me. It took my mind to, instead of the pain, mm -hmm. I just started thinking about where I want to be mm. and how it's going to look and feel. Mm. And funny enough, I live near where there's almost like a highway. So mm. I hear the cars just going back and forth. And in my mind, I turned those sounds into the ocean. Wow, I love that. And I, I just that. started thinking about where I want to be with the beach and the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling better. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are so welcome. I'm so glad you had that experience. And, you know, when we think about the mind being in control, what you shared is exactly that being able to say, okay, for this visualization today, those cars going by, that's not the cars, that's the ocean right? Yeah. It's really creating these beautiful experiences where we get to play in our imaginations again, right? Yeah. And not only that, but change parts of our minds and our brains because of it for the better. So thank you so much for sharing that. That really- well, Thank you. Me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All righty. Well, to sum up today, I know we went a little over. I don't want to take up more of y'all's time, but talked about, you know, getting a clear picture of what hypnosis is, what it isn't, how stress might be coming into your life and how hypnosis can be a really active tool to help you manage that, right? And so next week, we're going to be talking about the difference between stress and stressors and how you can manage both. Um, this is a very like nuanced topic I didn't learn about until a few months ago when I read it in a book. And it's going to be our session, same time, Thursday at 11 a.m. We're going to end the session again with another hypnosis experience. It will be something different. So just so you know, every week we're going to do a different hypnosis session, um, but it will get you to similar feelings. 
If you have any questions before we meet again next week, I'd love to see you guys again here. Um, you can email me. My email is on the screen here. Hello at authenticityremastered.com. And similarly, my website is there as well. So um, if anyone has any questions, let me know. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. I, thank you. I, I love you. Really nice um, comments in the chat. I don't know if you're seeing them or not, Emma, but um, it seems like this was really positive. I'm thrilled with the turnout. Um, we had, I don't know if you were able to see, but we had 15 people, um, you know, at our, at our max. A few people had to jump off. Um, since we ran over. Um, but I do hope that you'll all come back for the next sessions as they are um, kind of sequential and do build and they are different. And we hope by the end of this month, you will all be feeling calmer, less stressed <laughs> and more relaxed thanks to Emma and her talent and skills and her lovely relaxing voice as a bunch of you are commenting on. Thank you. Um, again, we will be recording this also. So once it goes in our video library, you can go back and listen to it. So um, Emma, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you and everyone else here same time next week. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you guys next week. And thank you again for being here.